I'm very saddened, but the state of science or, and science education in Pakistan is pretty pathetic. Of course, there are pockets where you can find students who know the basics of the subject. You will also find a few people who do good research, but then it's like maybe 5%. The rest of the 95% is uh, something that just doesn't figure in the world of science, either in research or in teaching. And so I feel that Pakistan has actually done pretty badly in science. That uh, if one looks at the state of science 40 years ago and compares it with today, in some ways we are better, but in other ways we have regressed. Of course, there's been a huge expansion in the number of universities. There are far more papers that are being published today. Unfortunately, those papers because of the internet are very often plagiarized or they carry very little content. There's little originality to them. It's a, it's a nation that's not using its capacity. In the 1970s, I'd say that things were looking very positive for Pakistan as a society, not just in science, but in terms of education, in terms of culture, in terms of a feeling that we are moving towards becoming a better society. It was General Ziaul Haq who began the trend the other way. The strict laws, the kinds of uh, policies that he implemented, the rising role of religion in matters of the state, in matters of society, those have been instrumental in causing Pakistan to seek salvation in the past, to look back to some hypothetical golden era. Now, it has been to the detriment of modernity. The rest of the world is moving forward, or I should say much of the rest of the world is moving forward. But uh, as long as our goals are in the past, we can't really expect to move forward. In some places, religious extremism is certainly palpable, obvious. After all, there are something like uh, 1800 schools which have been blown up by the Taliban. You have had 15-year-old girls shot in the head. You've, you have in a substantial part of the country, girls who are forced into burqa, other places is voluntary. So yes, certainly in some areas, it has been extremely regressive. On the other hand, religion doesn't play a very big role in uh, O and A level schools. So it has a different effect in different places. But by and large, I think the the real problem of science, of art, literature, culture, whatever in Pakistan, are the strictures that are, pay, that are placed upon people's thinking. Young minds, if they are allowed to be free, then they will create. If you put them into a straitjacket, then they can only obey. And in traditional societies, the, the, the emphasis has been upon obeying upon deference to authority, not to challenging authority. That's where our problem comes from. Look, I think that the bomb is immoral. Whether it is, hands, whether it is in the hands of the United States or Israel, India or Pakistan, North Korea, Iran, etc., etc., the bomb kills on a mass scale, it kills indiscriminately, it kills in a way that's indescribably cruel. I mean, those people who die in the explosion are the fortunate ones. The ones who will die weeks and months and years later, they will die slow, painful death, stretching over a very long time. To eliminate these weapons is absolutely necessary for the survival of humanity. But now coming specifically to the South Asian situation, well, I think India did a very bad thing by starting the nuclear race on the subcontinent. We did 
a bad thing in following India into that. But for heaven's sakes, now that they have the bomb and enough of them to destroy us and we have enough bombs to destroy them, let's stop it right here. It's a dream of people that there will be no nuclear weapons at some distant point in the future. And I believe in that dream. But I think that humanity will have to see something very terrible happen. The lessons of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are now too old. I don't know where the next use of atomic weapons will be. Will it be by North Korea against South Korea? Will it be by India or Pakistan against each other? Will it be some jihadi group getting control of our nuclear weapons and using them? Will it be the United States bombing Iran or Israel bombing Iran? I don't know. But something big has to happen and then we humans will ultimately have to come to our senses.